Welcome to What's New in Big Data Management 10.2.2. BDN 10.2.2 has three main strategic themes. One being an enterprise class product in the big data ecosystems. Two, to offer advanced as part functionality. And three, to be available across clouds and across connectivity. Let's take a quick look at the enterprise class functionality that's available in 10.2.2. Containerization support. It has been a very common use case for our customers to be able to replicate the environments, such as creating a new QA environment to be able to certify or test some new functionality that they are building as part of their applications. Similarly, there are use cases around being able to automate the installation configuration and availability of an Informatica environment. With the containerization support in 10.2.2, you can build Docker containers and images and automate the overall flow using skin tools such as Kubernetes. Atlassian Bitbucket is a new version control system that we're supporting in 10.2.2 in addition to Perfor, Subversion, and Git that we already have available. BDM uses the concept of applications to deploy or migrate code from one Informatica environment to another. An application is a container in which you group the executable objects such as mappings and workflows and migrate them. The incremental deployment functionality in 10.2.2 offers you the ability to modify an application, either add new objects or modify and update existing objects inside that application without having to have a overall downtime of the application. This is extremely helpful when you have mixer workloads such as streaming mappings and batch mappings. Data integration service has seen tremendous amount of improvements and enhancements in 10.2.2. It is more robust and with hundreds of stability related enhancements under the hood, it is more stable than ever. The data integration service also has several enhancements in it that makes it well coordinated, especially when you have a multi-node data integration service such as a grid environment or a primary backup node use case. It's also much faster and will be able to submit jobs much faster to the data compute clusters and can also submit these jobs in a high concurrent fashion. In fact, it will be able to process about 6x more concurrent jobs in 10.2.2 as compared to the previous versions. Resiliency is now built in and data integration service can now handle crashes, failures and unexpected scenarios in a much graceful fashion. For example, DS queuing. This is one of the examples of the stability and robustness that we have improved in 10.2.2. Though queuing itself existed all the way from 10.2.0, now the new distributed and persistent queue not only allows us to be able to queue the job request coming from the clients and automatically process across various nodes that you have as part of a DAS grid in a parallel fashion, but it also purses the queue. So if one of these nodes goes down, the other nodes will be able to pick the request up and when the node comes back up, it will be able to continuously seamlessly take additional requests coming through the queue. Big Data Job Recovery is introduced in 10.2.2. With this new functionality, when a DAS node crashes or there are network failures and the connection or communication between the Informatica domain and the Hadoop clusters or the Big Data Compute clusters is lost, DAS will be able to resiliently recover and repair into the jobs that are continue to run on the Hadoop clusters as if this failure has never happened. For example, you have a mapping that has a bunch of Spark tasks. You run the mapping, we submit the Spark job to the Hadoop cluster, but for whatever reason, let's say the communication network between the Informatica domain and the compute cluster is lost. When the communication network is restored, the DAS will now be able to talk to the Hadoop and understand the latest status of the job and then be able to seamlessly resume the job from that point of time as if the failure has never happened. This is also supported when you have external components such as cube sources or targets as part of your spot mappings. DS has seen several performance enhancements in 10.2.2. It now requires about half footprint in memory as compared to the previous version 10.2.1. 
and can also load applications up to 14 times faster as compared to your previous releases. The data integration service itself now starts about nine times faster as compared to the previous releases and all in all can process tens of thousands of jobs and submit them to the data integration services from the clients within less than two minutes. Mass Intuition is originally introduced in 10 to 1 and gave our customers a new way to be able to ingest thousands of database tables into HDFS or Hive. In 10 to 2, we are introducing incremental loads for Mass Intuition with this using the same web interface that is simple to use and a point and click interface. You will now be able to switch between full loads and incremental loads and be able to execute them for hundreds of tables in Spark execution mode very seamlessly. The REST Operations Hub introduced in 10 2 allows you to perform REST queries to gather the monitoring statistics of any jobs that are executing on the Informatica domain. This includes being able to query the mapping statistics, the advanced statistics of mapping such as the source rows, target rows, error rows, the timestamps, start and end timestamps of various tasks within and so on. You will also be able to get the execution steps for a given mapping. For example, if a given mapping has a scoop source and some transformations, you have a scoop job that's executing as well as the spark job that's executing as part of the same mapping. And you will be able to get these details as well through the REST queries itself. The dynamic expression support, which is a tech preview feature introduced in 10 2 will now allow you to parameterize the entire expression for a given port in the expression aggregated on rank transformations. With this, you will not only be able to pass values into your mappings, but you can actually pass the logic itself that get, get processed as part of these transformations. So we have introduced a new parameter type called expression. Just create a new parameter and use it as if you're using any other parameter as part of these ports in these particular transformations. And you can pass the logic or the code itself at runtime. Now these are all great enhancements on the enterprise class functionality. Now let's take a quick look at the advanced Spark functionality that we have introduced in 22. The first thing that comes to mind is dynamic mappings with complex types. Dynamic mappings themselves have seen great amount of enhancements in 22. Now you can build dynamic mappings in conjunction with complex types such as array structs and maps leading to dynamic arrays, dynamic structs and maps. But at the same time, you can also use dynamic mappings with complex files, Amazon S3, Redshift, uh, Azure ADLS blob, and many more connectivities. As part of using the dynamic mappings with complex types, you can build um, dynamic structs, arrays, and maps. So with this, you will be able to build powerful templates of mappings that can not only process primitive types of data, but also complex of types of data coming from various ecosystems, either HDFS or uh, on-premise or cloud and also be able to build complex mappings that can either take the source changes and propagate those changes to your target systems or to adapt it to the source changes but keep the target structure or retain the target structure to be the same. These are use cases that are extremely helpful especially when you're doing relational to hierarchy or hierarchical to relational use cases. You can now also do a data preview on Spark. This functionality is a tech preview in 10 to 2, but allows developers to be able to debug complex mappings that have uh, complex hierarchies as part of them in a much more simpler fashion. As you can see on the screenshot over here, now you will be able to not only see the hierarchical data in the data viewer, but you will also be able to navigate and interact with the data. So as you can see in these screenshots, you can kind of expand, collapse these hierarchies. These hierarchies can be very complex, having a combination of arrays, tracks, and maps as part of them in conjunction with the primitive data types. You can also follow the breadcrumbs to um, identify what kind of level of detail you're going into for each given hierarchy and come back and forth and also navigate through various other hierarchies that are available. There are several DA functionality um, on Spark that have been extensively enhanced in 22. 
For example, mapping outputs are now supported in Spark. You can you build informatica mappings that produce aggregated information and then apply uh, aggregations such as min max or sum on top of it, persist these values eventually and then be able to kind of reuse them in the subsequent mapping runs. Monitoring also has seen several enhancements and uh, monitoring in Spark is now about up to 2x uh, performance as compared to the previous versions. Monitoring now also supports several additional transformations and functionality such as update strategy transformation, SQL authorization, high asset transactions and so on. We have also introduced a high precision support in 22 that can be used across Kube, ComplexFile, AWS, and Azure ecosystems, as well as in streaming use cases. The Python transformation, which was introduced in 10.2.1, has also seen several major performance enhancements and has a much more simplified configuration. The intelligent structure discovery itself now supports data drift use cases. So as you interact with the machine learning models, if you pro provide a different file at the runtime or your data changes over a period of time and is no longer matching the same schema that you have provided as a sample when you began your uh, data pipelines. Now you will be able to see these additional attributes flowing into your mapping through the newly introduced unassigned data pool and be able to make data driven decisions inside your BDM mapping. Now let's take a quick look at cloud and connectivity aspects of BDM. On the HDFS connectivity, now we have AppenFX's functionality. So you will not only be able to treat an entire logical directory as one single file, but now you will also be able to append new files into um, HDFS. Hive is now supported in native modes in conjunction with the Hadoop Piston modes and you can use Hive switches and targets as part of the dynamic mappings as well. And as I'm going to talk about in my upcoming slides, Schema Drift is now supported in Hive. The Hive Schema Drift introduced in 10 2 now allows you to build complex mappings that can take sources that change over a period of time and make a decision about whether or not you want to propagate those changes to your target, which is Hive. There are several new strategies that have been introduced as part of Hive Schema Drift. The create strategies allows you to replace your existing Hive Schema and with the new schema that we're receiving from the source, but at the same time, you also have the functionality to be able to propagate only new columns coming from your source or even modify the column data type changes from your source or to be able to fail a mapping in case the source schema no longer matches with the target schema so that a business analyst can look at the differences in the schemas and then make a decision in terms of how these changes have to be propagated. The complex file data object has seen several enhancements, including dynamic mapping support, create target support for additional file formats. We now also have the support for being able to provide a file name port for both reading as well as writing use cases and also wildcard character support. Now you can build a file name for your complex file targets in midstream as part of your mapping. This will allow you to reorganize your target data structures and make those decisions in terms of how your target structure should be organized as part of your mapping. You can provide uh, the key value pairs of the file name and the value and we'll be able to take those values and create the subdirectories in the given target structure and reorganize the data based on the mapping logic. The wildcard based reads allow you to read multiple files and multiple directories from your source and gives you complete control in terms of the files or directories that are being read. So you're no longer uh, restricted to reading complete directories or just single files, but you can use a mix and match of various combinations of these wildcards, including a question mark representing a single character as well as an asterisk representing zero or more occurrences of any given character on both on-premise HDFS as well as um, on S3 and be able to uh, read multiple files as part of a single mapping run. 
Azure Databricks is a new ecosystem that we have introduced in 10.2.2. The 10.2.2GA has support for Databricks 5.1 with Spark 2.3.1 support. Um, the functionality itself works very similar to um, the way HD Insights and Amazon AWS works in terms of being able to automatically provision an ephemeral cluster. Now you can build a BDM workflow wherein you can create a Databricks cluster execute mappings from top of the cluster and then just terminate the cluster at the end of your processing all in one single medium workflow. On the Amazon ecosystem, uh, we have introduced a dynamic mapping support for S3 as well as Redshift and the file name puts for targets and wildcard character supports that have been added to S3. The Redshift itself, uh, connector itself has seen several enhancements in terms of parameterization and ODBZ based pushdown is now supported for the Redshift sources and targets. Snowflake has seen several Scala and the performance enhancements. On the Azure ecosystem, all the connectors are now supported on the data breaks and dynamic mapping support has been introduced for Blob and ADLS. There are several new functionality including compression for support as well as complex type support such as Avro Parkageson have been added to ADLS and um, Blob. Several performance enhancements including Spark optimizations have uh, been applied on Azure DW connectors. The Google ecosystem itself has now four new connectors, Google Cloud Storage, Google Spanner, BigQuery, and Analytics, all of them supported both on native and Spark modes using the latest Google APIs. The Google Cloud Storage also supports various complex file formats, including Avro, Park, JSON, as well as the support for binary data types. In summary, Big Data Management 10.2.2 allows you to build complex applications that run at scale with ease. You will be able to operate your Big Data Management environment um, at scale using several functionalities such as monitoring via REST queries and incremental deployment. And now you can also use the same great Big Data Management for next in use cases such as serverless functionality using data breaks and data drift with machine learning using intelligent structure discovery. Thank you for watching this video and for more such informational videos, please visit our Informatica network at network.informatica.com.